you guys are taking on, pun intended, a red hot uh, Calgary Flames squad. Uh, can you talk about the challenge ahead of you guys and how much the group kind of looks at a game like this to see it as a measuring stick? Well, I think you look at the Calgary Flames, it's clear they're fire, firing on a lot of cylinders right now. Uh, they're playing the game the right way and they're getting rewarded for it. We're aware of the challenge that's before us tonight and we're prepared for it. How, how do you best describe the way you guys, the team plays differently now that you're here? Well, uh, I think the best way to put it would be the, maybe some areas of emphasis since uh, Dave Manson and I came up three weeks ago or so. Um, we put a lot of import on our work back to our own end. Um, uh, the responsibilities on our track, the um, willingness to track the way you need to to have success in the National Hockey League, and then just um, a coordination between the forwards and the D in, in that kind of uh, system. Um, so that's that that's been a major area of emphasis over the last few weeks. Uh, the challenge is the rigors of the National Hockey League schedule. We've feels like we've touched uh, every part of North America over the last three weeks. We've gone down to California. We've um, gone to Florida. We've been in the Midwest. Um, so the ability to implement some small small changes to the team and the way that we want the team to play, uh, the challenge is that you don't have a lot of practice time to do it. So you, ha you have to find ways to be creative, to get your points across without paralyzing anybody with too much information or whatnot. Uh, and so far, uh, our players have responded. And, uh, you know, we know we're going to get tested tonight by one of the hottest teams in the National Hockey League. Jay, what's, uh, what do you see if a player like Elias Lindholm, who may not be known to a lot of hockey fans, but plays a pretty important role on this Calgary Flames team? Yeah, I see uh, somebody who's a very detailed hockey player. He's helping make that line go. Um, I have an awareness of where he is having success offensively, uh, specifically on the cycle. Um, he seems uh, that he touches a lot of areas of their game, um, power play, penalty kill, um, and he can play against anybody in the National National Hockey League, so he's a good player for them. You coached at this level you know, prior for a long time, but what's yeah. it like now in a head coaching role to be going up against some of these head coaches who've been around forever? You know, Daryl's been around yeah. forever. What's that like on an individual level? Well, I would say that I have tremendous amount of respect for all the coaches in the National Hockey League, uh, head coaches and assistant coaches. Um, having been in this league, I know how hard it is. Um, but I would say that it's not Jay versus Daryl. It's the Edmonton Oilers versus the Calgary Flames in the Battle of Alberta. I would say that um, the coaches that uh, we're going up against um, are all prepared. They uh, they're in this league in this position for a reason, and uh, for us, uh, our focus is not on the coach we're going against. It's on uh, the challenge that the team that that coach uh, coaches presents. So that, that's where our focus is. Um, and you know, one thing we said to our media back in Edmonton. Uh, when I get, was asked about the biggest difference about being an assistant coach in this league or being a head coach in this league, I think the biggest difference is between having an opinion and being the person that has the final say. What, uh, what sort of resources Glenn Gulliton been for you? He's a guy we obviously around here. Yeah, Glenn uh, obviously has been in the National Hockey League in various capacities over over um, the last decade or so. Uh, so, you know, he has head coach experience uh, with Calgary and with Dallas. And um, he, he's been, uh, had the opportunity to work under a bunch of different coaches in the National Hockey League. So uh, he's somebody that uh, I draw on for sure. Uh, I believe in a collaborative, collegial type of coaching staff. And uh, Glenn is no different than Dave or Brian or Dustin or Jeremy for us. Uh, we want to tap into every resource we have uh, to come up with the, the best game plan possible. It doesn't just have to be my idea. We're just looking for the best idea. Lineup updates for us. Today? Lineup updates. Uh, Koskinen's in. Yeah. Uh, Bouchard and Yamamoto. Will they play? Uh, Yamamoto will play. Yes, and Bouchard is going to be a uh, game time decision for us. If you can't play. You might have to go to twelve and six. Sorry, <laughs> you haven't done that yet. Um, is that uh, what? 
what does that kind of bring for you? You know, you've, you've obviously done it. That's well, the, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's not that we don't have experience doing that over our years uh, uh, coaching, but uh, yeah, no, that could be a possibility for us tonight. And if it is, feel quite comfortable with the people that we're going to ice uh, versus Calgary tonight. What do you like about the, 12 and 7? Coach? What, do you, what, what do you like about 12 and 7? I mean, uh, 11 and 7? I'm sorry, 11 yeah. and 7, yeah. What, what's the, what, why does that appeal to you so much? Well, I think um, for us, it's not that we set out to try and uh, reinvent anything or, or uh, be ultra innovative or anything like that. For us, uh, we've had experience uh, in Bakersfield doing that, uh, just based out of necessity. Um, we like what we saw. Uh, when we came up to Edmonton, uh, we wanted to try and maximize uh, the players that we had at our uh, at our disposal. So we wanted to come up with uh, a way that um, you know maybe helped some of our younger defensemen by spreading the minutes out amongst the many. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of side benefits uh, to 11 and seven, including matchups, uh, including being able to find. You know, one or two more extra shifts for your top players every every uh, period. Um, so yeah, we have experience doing eleven and seven, and we have experience doing twelve and six. So uh, we're comfortable with the people that we have available to us. For us, it comes down to trying to find a way to ice the lineup that we think gives us the best chance to win. Do you Calgary is a physical team? They got some big guys. They can grind you down. Uh, as a head coach going in against that team, do you? You know, do you try to beat them at the way they play? Do you try to play the way you play? Do you, what's different when you're going up against that team? Well, I think uh, one of the points of emphasis over the last three weeks for us has been about concentrating on us, the Edmonton Oilers, our way of playing the game, trying to develop it, trying to develop a playing personality that best suits the Edmonton Oilers. Now, heading into um, – the different buildings that we've had to head into over the last three weeks. Each team presents different challenges. So I think you can tailor game plans based on the opponent that you're going to see. But in the end, it comes down to you playing to your full potential. And so for us, our import or emphasis has been on trying to develop that playing personality for the Edmonton Oilers, while at the same time understanding the strengths and challenges other teams uh, present to you. You have the personnel to play that physical game against Calgary, do you think? Well, you're, I think what you're defining physicality is is, is on the finish check or um, maybe on fighting. I, I don't know how I don't know how you're thinking about that, um, but for me, I think there's many ways to to um, define physicality. It's winning a 50-50 puck. It's playing inside somebody's equipment. It's the willingness to go to hard areas on the ice. It is um, the ability to take a hit to make a play, to guarantee your line out, to guarantee the other team's line in. Those, to me, are important definitions of the word physicality. And as I said, what we're trying to do here with our staff and with our team is tailor um, tailor the best way of playing for the group that we have available to us. Okay, and how difficult is it to do that in season? I think about Daryl Sutter. He took over with 30 games to go last mm -hmm. season. You started to establish an identity then and then throughout the offseason. You haven't had that luxury, so what challenge does that present? Yeah, and I would also add the fact that uh, with the COVID year and all the scheduling rechanges and all that kind of stuff, we haven't had as many uh, practices as maybe uh, I would like, um, but uh, that said, you got to get creative. You have to find ways to get to people. Uh, you have to paint a picture of why we're asking our players to do certain things. And uh, then you got to continue to reinforce it. All that said, I don't believe in the situation uh, that we came into that you can go and, and pick 10, 12 different areas to focus on. You have to pick one thing. We've called it the lead domino, and then you just kind of whack away at it and try and build your game over time. In the way that you've just defined physicality uh, and the way you value it, how have you found that Ryan McLeod has has uh, done in the last little while in that, in that well, way? I've seen the maturity of Ryan McLeod over the last um, 
even if you go back to the playoffs when he came down to Bakersfield, kind of got airlifted in at the start of his professional career. I've seen him take steps. Uh, is there more to go? There is more to go for Ryan McLeod. I think he's at his best when um, he's willing to go to hard areas to score. He did the other night. He went to the blue paint, was rewarded for it. I think he's at his best when he gets his nose dirty out there. And uh, he's a big man that can skate and it's hard to handle.